Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and I've been crocheting about 12 years and um, I started out making hats, beanies, stuff like that, washcloths. And then when I started my channel about a year and a half ago, I really branched out into other types of crochet. Like I love to do wearables and amigurumi and just all the crochet stuff. So if you are interested in um, seeing what people are working on, and just some good old crochet chat and yarny fun, then I hope that you will consider subscribing. And if you like this video, then I really hope that you will like this video. So I'm going to start out with the yarn review. So I have a finished project that I've made with this yarn. And then I'm also going to go through all the different like specs of the yarn, um, what I thought about it. So if you have considered picking this yarn up or um, have never heard of it before, um, then you can learn more about it and see if it's something you may want to try out for yourself. So that yarn is the Yarn Bee Chromatic Spectrum yarn. And this comes in, I believe, about five or six different colors. I will put a short little video clip here. Um, I hauled these not long ago, and I took a little clip of all the different colorways. And so it's a real short video. I'll put that in right now. But the two colors that I picked up are the color um, All Systems Indigo and the color Island Life. And I made a pro project with the Island Life. So first of all, um, this is categorized as a weight three yarn. It is 100% acrylic. It's 357 yards, which to me, like it, it doesn't seem like it would be that much. Um, but there is a lot of yardage packed into this skein. Um, the colors are absolutely beautiful. And this recommends a four millimeter crochet hook or four millimeter, four millimeter knitting needles. It is a four ounce or 113 gram skein. So in my haul video, I had said that I really think that I would have categorized this as a four weight. Um, let me grab like a basic value. Like, I love this yarn skein. This is just a random skein I pulled out. And we're just going to compare. Oh, I just hit my head. <laughs> we're going to compare the thickness. Hopefully, my camera will cooperate here. Okay. So, first of all, here is how thick that um, chromatic spectrum is. Here's the thickness of the, the I Love This Yarn for weight. So now let's put these together and see what we think. If I can make this work. <laughs> okay, so you let me know what you think. Hopefully you can get a good look at that. So as you can see, this yarn takes two colors and like twist them together. Um, and man, it is just so pretty. I can't get over this yarn. This is just right up my alley. But I love that they use a base color and then they take the different um, colors and they're pretty evenly spaced through there and um, incorporate those in. There's just so many different colors. Like the more you get into it, there's more colors than you would think that there is off first glance. And I will show you that again in the project I made, um, but a better example of that. On feel, this yarn is super, super soft. Um, it feels really, really nice. If you were to take a strand like this and give it like the stretch test, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of stretch to it. I knew I wanted to make a beanie with this. And so I was thinking, man, it's, it's not very stretchy. Is this going to make a good beanie or is it going to be too stiff or, or what's going to happen with it? But it is, like I said, super soft. So I felt like it had great potential and I love the colorways. Um, so I made a bag of day beanie pattern with this. Um, it is like a basic ribbed top down beanie. And I will definitely link that video tutorial below. It is a great tutorial. And so I use the color Island Life, and this is how it looks. 
And so you can see with this one, with this colorway, it was like a turquoise base. And then it has all of these different pastel colors and sort of neon colors running through it. So it has like a purple, pink, um, some other sort of bluish turquoises, a lighter pink. And then you have this like green, yellow strip. <laughs> and then you have more pink, a little bit more purple. And so I was really surprised by that green stripe right here. Um, you know, I noticed that color within the skein, but it really didn't show up until right then where like a lot of the other ones seem to repeat the pinks and the purples. And so I thought that this would be more spread out throughout the beanie. So if I were going to give this a title, um, now Bag of Day, she has, you know, this is her beanie pattern, but just like this beanie mixed with this colorway, I just, as soon as I made it, I was like, this reminds me of the Northern Lights. <laughs> so I would call this like my Northern Lights beanie. Doesn't that make you think of the Northern Lights, especially with this green band here? It just seems like that is exactly the colors that you would see in the, nor in the Northern Lights. Okay, so for the stretchiness of it, with this particular stitch, now this is the only um, stitch that I have used with this yarn. I do plan to make another beanie out of this or at least an ear warmer and um, use a different stitch. So we will see if it's still stretchy with a different type of stitch. But with this ribbed front post double crochet um, stitching, it is extremely stretchy. Let me pull it back here so you can see. So as you can see, very, very, very stretchy. Um, but I love that I used a five millimeter hook and um, you really, you know, this is a very tight, tightly woven beanie. So I like that. The stitch was a great choice, I think, for this yarn, but it gives it a lot of stretch. Um, so here's what it looks like on. Ignore the messy hair. It's been up in a clip all day. Um, but I was a little nervous about using it because she does use a four weight in her pattern and she uses a bigger hook size so i was nervous that it wasn't going to turn out right um but what i did was i added two extra stitches at the beginning of the round um, and i used a one hook size smaller and it ended up being perfect so here is how it fits and looks And I really, really like the way it looks on. I haven't used it out yet, like out in the air. <laughs> so I don't know like how warm it's going to be. It's, it's not probably going to be the warmest beanie, but on a fall spring day where you just need a little bit of warmth around your head and the wind not, you know, blowing into your ears. I hate that when the wind's super strong and it, it's a little bit chilly and you just feel like it's hurting your ears. I don't know if any of you all feel like that, but I just love to have something covering my ears, even on the days that are like more in the 50s and, you know, has a breeze and you don't necessarily need something for a lot of warmth, but just something to kind of block that wind, if that makes sense. Um, but I think this is just a super fun, super colorful beanie and I highly suggest Bag o Day's beanie patterns. I have struggled. I made a video a while back where I was talking about how much I have struggled with beanies lately. But every time I do a Bag o Day beanie pattern, it always turns out. And I was nervous about this one, but it still turned out great. But yeah, I'm super happy with it. I really enjoyed making it. So working with this yarn was very nice. It did have a couple knots in the skein, but I was, they were small enough that I was able to hide them within the beanie, just, you know, working the stitches kind of around it in a way that would hide it a little bit. And there wasn't a lot of knots. Um, it wasn't a huge problem, just like kind of a couple, I guess, your average sort of what you might see in your everyday skein. Um, the feel of it was really nice. I really enjoyed watching the colors transition and it was kind of a fun little surprise every time a new color showed up and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I didn't have much of my skein left. I kind of had a feeling that this beanie would take more yardage with the stitch we used plus it being a lighter four. Um, I think it's pretty comparable to a four but I guess whenever you really get that worked into a stitch it does have a tendency to 
um, become a little bit thinner, if that makes sense. Because you can see there, if I let go, it's a little puffier. And then as you work it, like, it's a little bit thinner. So maybe I see, maybe when they wrapped it to do the gauge, if that's how they did it, um, then that's why they determined it that way. And so it did take more yardage than um, I anticipated, but I was able to make a beanie just fine with one skein and I still had some yarn left over. So that's definitely not a problem. Um, so it was $5.99 at Hobby Lobby, but I got it on the 31st and off week. So I believe I paid $4.19. So $4.19 for a nice beanie. Um, that's pretty awesome. So yeah, really enjoyed the yarn overall. I highly recommend it. I do wish that they had more colorways, but I am happy with the colorways we have. They are beautiful and I want to try each and every one of them. Um, I don't think this yarn would make an absolutely beautiful blanket, but um, you know, keep in mind it is when you work it up a little bit, it works up more as a um, three weight than a four weight. I also think it would make amazing amigurumi, just the colors and how they work up. I think it would, depending on what you made, it would be super beautiful with um, all these different colorways. So I think that's about all I have to say about this yarn. I highly recommend it. I hope that you check it out and I hope that you enjoyed this little review and that you enjoyed seeing this beanie I made. Let me know if you've ever used this yarn or if it is on your to buy list for the future. So today I want to recommend this book to you. I'm doing this in a little, um, we call it a D group, but it's like an accountability group through our church. Um, me and two other people, we meet up every other week and we just started going through this book. And so I really wanted to recommend it because even though I'm only a couple chapters in, I can tell that I'm really going to love it. And it is by Jen Wilkin and it is called In His Image. And it says 10 ways God calls us to reflect his character. And um, so far, I have really, really enjoyed it. And I think it's going to really um, bless me in a lot of ways and grow me um, as a Christian. So I just wanted to recommend that real quick. And the verse I wanted to read to you today is Leviticus 20, 26. You shall be holy to me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. So this whole first chapter talked about how God is holy and how he not only is holy, but he calls us to be holy. So what does holy mean? Holiness is to be set apart for God. And so it talked about how our lives should reflect that holiness. Now, we are holy because of Jesus's sacrifice for us, but um, that is positionally holy is what she calls it. So like we are in a position of holiness because of the redeeming blood of Jesus. But we can also be, God calls us also to be practically holy, where we are continually trying to practice a state of holiness, not that we will ever be perfect, but that we need to, um, my son's screaming for me, I better wrap this up, but that we need to um, do things that lead us more into holiness. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, I hope you all can't hear that, that we need to be more patient and more kind and pray for God to continually um, consecrate us and sanctify us into a holier life. And so I hope that that um, resonates with you today. I really hope that you have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you super soon. May God bless you. I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.